Welcome to As Yet Unsolved, the show where we take a look at unsolved cases from around the world that still haunt us. We look to dive into major and lesser known cases as a way of educating and keeping the memory of those lost alive. It's our sincere hope that someday all of the cases featured here will be solved and bring closure to all of those involved. But before we begin, please make sure to hit that subscribe button and click the notification bell to be alerted when we release new content, as over 90% of you watching are not yet subscribed. New videos release every single week, and your support means the world to us as we strive to not filter our content as we feel it does a disservice to those featured. On October 28th of 1991, a call would come into the 911 dispatch office in Wheeling, Illinois. The call would set off a mystery that endures to this day and has left a family and community seeking answers. This is As Yet Unsolved and the case of Jamie Santos. The unidentified caller told the operator an address in which they could find a young woman who was not breathing. The caller refused to identify themselves to the person manning the dispatch line that day, and a later investigation would note that the call had come from a payphone. Still, police moved quickly and when they arrived at the address the person provided, they would find 27-year-old Jamie Santos lying on the floor. She was not breathing, and police concluded that the young woman had been smothered to death with a nearby pillow. Jamie was a popular woman who had used her natural good looks to survive in the busy city of Chicago. You see, Jamie worked as an exotic dancer who would work private parties around the city. During her time dancing, it was not uncommon for Jamie to bring home a thousand dollars or more every week. And it was this money that funded her pretty normal life in the suburbs. Jamie was close to her parents who lived just down the street from where Jamie took residence. They were also aware of her dancing, and while they voiced their concerns for her and her safety, Jamie would calm their fears by telling them that she always took precautions. Jamie told her parents that she always had a driver on hand who would not only take her to her appointments, but also stick around in case he was needed. She also made it clear that she would leave any engagement whenever she got a bad feeling or felt that things were moving beyond the dancing that she was contracted for. Still, some believe that her dancing may have somehow played a part in her eventual murder. We don't know much leading up to the murder, but we do know that on Sunday, October 27th, a day before the call came in, Jamie wasn't feeling very well. It's known that Jamie canceled all of her bookings that she had scheduled for that day and decided to rent a couple of movies and have an easy night in. She also called a friend that same day to catch up and talk. That conversation would be the last time anyone heard from Jamie before being found murdered. On the scene, police found very little to work with. The home showed no signs of forced entry, meaning it's possible that Jamie had left an entrance to her home unlocked, or that she possibly knew the person who would end up taking her life. Investigators did find signs of a struggle taking place, but Jamie 
did not show any signs of being sexually assaulted in any way. But even with signs of a struggle being found, Jamie's head was found propped up on a pillow, something intentionally done after her death. The investigation found no eyewitnesses to the crime, no usable fingerprints, or anything in the home that could help provide investigators with any sort of DNA profile that they could work from. The only piece of evidence that investigators had to work with was the original 911 recording. They managed to track down the location of the payphone used in the call to outside of a liquor store in a strip mall only a half block from Jamie's home. Police eventually released the recording of the 911 call in hopes that someone would come forward with information on the caller. What follows is that 911 call. 911 caller was responsible for Jamie's murder or was simply a passerby. That said, the current thinking suggests that the caller had some involvement in Jamie's murder. Without evidence of forced entry, investigators think that Jamie knew her killer and that it could be a crime of passion potentially related to her work as an exotic dancer. You see, Jamie had a strict policy of not dating clients, and one of them could have come to her home looking for more. It's possible that things got out of hand and that they killed Jamie in a fit of rage, and, feeling some form of remorse for their actions, called 911 from down the road. The only interesting piece of information comes from that 911 call itself. You see, during the call, the caller corrected the 911 operator to the address of Jamie's home. This highly suggests that the person making the call knew Jamie in some fashion. To this day, the case of Jamie Santos remains unsolved. If you or anyone you know has any information regarding the murder or knowledge of the voice of that 911 call, you are encouraged to contact the Wheeling, Illinois Police Department. Hopefully, one day, we'll be able to solve this case and bring some closure to Jamie's family. Thank you for checking out this episode of As Yet Unsolved. If you like what you heard here, the best thing you can do is like, comment, and subscribe. And be sure to let us know in the comments below what you thought of this video and any future potential case that you'd like us to take a look at. Until then, stay safe, and we'll see you again real soon.